If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to answer the question yourself before listening on. In order to solve this question, what we can do is just draw a simple picture of the centrifuge. We can just imagine it to be a circle, and we can also assume that initially it's rotating in a counterclockwise fashion. That way we could say that its initial angular velocity is positive 3600 revolutions per minute. Now one of the problems right off the bat here is that revolutions per minute is a non-standard unit. We have to convert it into radians per second. So what we'll do is a couple of conversion factors. Now we know that one revolution is equivalent to two pi radians. And if we set it up in that manner, we can see that the revolutions are going to cancel out. We also know, of course, that one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. And by setting up that conversion factor, the minutes will cancel. Now notice that's gonna leave us with radians per second. We wanna pick up our calculators now and just process this conversion. And when we do that, we get approximately 377 radians per second. So this serves as the initial angular velocity. The question notes that the centrifuge is going to come to rest. So of course, that means the final angular velocity is going to be zero radians per second. And then we're told that the centrifuge undergoes 50 revolutions. Now that's going to be the angular displacement, but revolutions is also a non-standard unit. So we're gonna to have to convert that into the standard unit of radians. And once again, we know one revolution corresponds to two pi radians. We can cancel out the revolutions and that's gonna give us 100 pi radians. Now that we have those three quantities put into their standard forms, we can calculate the angular acceleration using one of the angular kinematics formulas. And since we have these four parameters, we're going to end up using this equation from angular kinematics. We have the final angular velocity squared equals the initial angular velocity squared plus two times the angular acceleration times the angular displacement. We can put a little F on here for final. And so since we're trying to solve for the angular acceleration, perhaps we can subtract the omega i squared over to the left-hand side. That's going to leave us with 2 alpha times theta, and then we can divide both sides of the equation by 2 theta. And then once we've solved that equation for the angular acceleration, we can plug in all of the known values. And when we compute that, we get approximately negative 226 and then the standard unit of angular acceleration is radians per second squared. So this will be the correct answer to the question. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe and also click that thumbs up icon. Remember, you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.